Hi guys and welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignAndTechTips.com. Well, we had a question, somebody was asking about the blog post slider and how to automate it. So we've built this little blog post slider here, as you can see. We've got navigation arrows and pagination. And it's automatically going to increment every five seconds. And of course, we've got a read more button, a title and some content there. Really easy to do, so let's get started. I'm going to enable the Visual Builder. Now to build this today, you're going to need to have some posts. For anybody that doesn't know how to create a post, go to your dashboard, go to your posts, hit add new. And you can give it a title. Use the Divi Builder or however you like to create your posts. There's an important thing you need to remember though, when you're creating a post, you want to give it a featured image down here. Just click on the featured image. And select whatever image you want to give it. Because that's actually what's going to hit appear in the background today. We're using our as backgrounds. There's several different options that I'll show you, but we're actually using our featured image for the background. So if you create a post, give it a featured image, you can use it in this. And of course, the other thing that you'll want to know with posts is you want to create categories for your posts. Not necessarily if all your posts are about the same thing. And to create a category, just simply go to Categories and the Posts. Give your category a name and a slug. Slug's usually a lowercase version of the name itself. You can give it a parent category if you want. Hit the Add New and it'll appear up here. If I go back to my posts, I've got two categories really, new posts and old posts. And as you can see, those appear there. So make sure you've got some posts created before you try building a post slider or it's not going to work. <laughs> okay, well let's go back to where we were. We've got our visual builder here. I'm going to simply go down. I'm going to delete this post here. Okay, well let's start from scratch. I'm going to hit the little dark icon to add a new module. Divi comes with all these light grey modules here, plenty enough to build just about any site. I'm looking for a post slider today. Here we are over here, we've got a post slider. I'm just simply going to left click it. And up it pops. You can choose how many posts you want to display here. I'm going to say eight. I can't remember how many posts I've got, but that's going to work for me today. Include the categories that you want. I'm going to say new posts and old posts. If we roll down a little bit, you can select a date. New to old, old to new, title A to Z, Z to A or a random one. You can choose to show a button. There's the read more. Type what you want it to say there. Read more is pretty good for blog posts, but obviously put in whatever you want. This is the excerpt right here, the text. And you can change the length if you want to. If I change this to 150, it'll show a lot fewer characters there. And as with all Divi modules, if you do something you don't like what you've done, simply select it, delete it. It'll go back to the default for you, which was 270, I believe. You can offset your posts if you want to. And you can choose which elements to display here. If I click on that, we've got arrows, that's fine. We've got controls, this pagination dots around there. We've got a read more button. And post meta, which is the author, the date, category and the comments there. So you can decide what you want to show here just by simply flipping these off to on. I'm going to leave all of those on for mine today. Featured image. I showed you how to add the featured image with your post there and this is what we're using for the background on ours. But you can set different ways of doing it. If you don't want it to be the full background you can select it on the left. This won't actually put it on the left for us today because I'm working in a single column. If you were going to make a full width slider, let's just pop this back. And what I'll do is I'm going to add a new little section here and I'll show you how you can turn this into a full width slider if you want to. I'm going to add a new section. I'm going to make mine a regular section. I'm going to put in a single column. I'm going to actually duplicate this module 
by clicking on the module, going to the dark tab, blue tab for a section, green tab for a row, dark tab for the module. I'm going to hit the two little icons there, the square ones. That'll clone this module. There it is. I'm going to drag one of them down to our new section, our new row here, with the little handle. Okay, so we've got that so far. If we want to make this full width, you want to go into your section and take any padding away top and bottom. Little cog to get in the section. I'm going to go to design. I'm going to go to spacing. And padding top, I'm going to put a zero. That'll take away the padding from the section top. Hit the chain, it'll take it away from the bottom too. Now we're going to go in the row and do the same thing and also make it full width. So you've got a full width slider. So again, I'm going to click on here. I'm going to go into the green tab this time. Do exactly the same thing. I'm going to go over to spacing, put a zero in. Hit the little chain. That's taking the padding away from the row, top and bottom. Now we want to make this full width. So if we close up spacing, just above spacing, we've got sizing. Here's width. If I pull that up to 100%, now I can simply copy it, control C, and paste it in max width below, control V, or just type it in if you prefer. And you've got a full width automated blog post slider. And that's a great little feature for your blog page, but I'm actually going to use the smaller one today. I just wanted to show you how to make it full width. So let's save that. So if we go back in here now with the full width one, and we'll go down to that background image that we were working with just now, featured image. Background at the moment, we put it on the left. Funny enough, it's going to turn off on the left. And the background color you see here is the color that, or image or picture or whatever it is you put in for the background down there. That's just the default for us. And of course you can have it on the right with the writing on the left if you prefer. Or obviously you can have it on the top or the bottom. That's entirely up to you. There's, there's several different options there. I couldn't show you the left and right without doing a full width one, or at least a single column one. So let's save our changes here. Now I've demonstrated that. I can actually delete this whole thing. And we'll go back into our original. And there's a featured image. Like I say, on these smaller ones, the top and bottom looks a lot better. But the left and right are gonna look better on your full width or at least single column ones. So you get the idea there. Great. Well, I'm sticking with mine in the background there because I quite like that. I'm not going to use a link on this because each of these links to the actual post itself. If you want to link the whole module to something else, you can put a link in here. And always best practice, if you're linking to your own site, keep it in the same window. If you're linking off site, open it in a new tab. OK, well, we've got everything in place there. We've got the things that we want. If we pop over to the design tab now, you've got the option to add an overlay. It puts one on there by default. And what that does is make things easier to read the button, the text and the title up there. For instance, if I put a black one on there, you can read that really easy. But of course, you can't see the image. If you want to see some of the image through it, simply click on the black. The right hand variegated slide here is what they call opacity or see-throughness. And you can take the color down until you can read as much as your text as you want to, but still see the image. And you'll notice the difference if I turn the switch to off here. So it really brightens up and this kind of gets a little bit lost in there. It's not too bad. I'm going to leave that on. And you've also got the option to use a text overlay. Well, if I turn this off again, we can just put an overlay over the text if you just want to highlight that. Simply turn that one on. There it is there. And of course, you can edit the color itself here the same way. You can bring that color back in like that. Pull the opacity down to where you want it. Whatever works for you. I'm happy to have the background overlay on mine, though. And we'll take the text overlay away. Fantastic. 
Okay, moving on down, we've got navigation, which are the little arrows that you see left and right here. And you can select your arrow color. I'm actually happy with mine to be white. That works for most of my images there, but obviously you can choose whatever color you want to choose there. And it's the same for the dots here. For a bit of fun, let's make them purple and I'll show you the changes. By default, it's going to automatically put a purple one in there and then sort of lighter purple, purple ones here with the opacity down a bit on them. Okay, image. Well, we've got the image now. We, we're not actually displaying an image because we're using ours for the background. But if you had it top, bottom, left and right, you could give it rounded corners and borders, all kinds of things, box shadows and things like that. I'm going to leave mine just as it is. You can style your title text, meta text and regular text separately. You can either do it by going to design and selecting them down here. Or if you hover over, you see these little blue circles with a white pen or paintbrush. If you click on one of those, it'll take you to the thing that it's connected to. The top one here is the title, second one's the medal, third one's the actual text itself, and the other one's the button. So if I click on this, it should take us to the title text. There we are. And let's just make that capital. And let's make it semi bold perhaps. I'm going to leave everything else just like it is, the meta text. There's the meta text and there's the body text. I'm going to leave those all just they are. With Divi, you get a crazy amount of font. If you see my videos before, you know this. But if you go in to the body font there, click on it, you've got hundreds and hundreds of fonts. You're not going to run out of fonts to choose from with the Divi theme. To audition one, just roll over it. It'll give you an example. I'm going to stick with the default today. OK, let's roll on down. So let's go into the button. And to custom style your button, I actually quite like the default there, that works well. But let's just custom style this to show you how you can do it. I'm going to turn this one on. Let's say text color I'll leave as white. We'll just change the background color. Let's make that purple, same as our dots. There we go. I think I'll take that border away. If we roll down a bit, there's button border width. To take it away, just take it down to zero. With the little arrows, or you can type it in. Got no border around that now. You can give it a border color if you want to, and a border radius if you want to. We can make this pill shaped if we want to by giving it a high pixel rate, say 50 pixels. And we've got a little pill shape button here. And again, you can change your fonts and font sizes. You can change your icon if you want to. When we hover over there, it's going to give us a little icon over here. If you don't want one, just turn that off. If you do want one, just select it from down here. Divi's just teamed up with Font Awesome, so there's an awful lot of them. But if you want to see them all, it's easiest if you click the little icon up here on the right-hand side. If you click it, it'll break out into a breakout box. And you can scroll through, and there's a lot to scroll through. But of course, you can do a search as well if you want to any specific type. Again, I'm going to leave mine on the default there. If you don't want to show one at all, just turn that to off. Or if you want it to be visible all the time, turn this to no. And as you can see, it pops it in there all the time. I'm going to leave mine just like that. Button alignment, middle's fine for me. You can give it some text shadow if you want to. It quite helps with buttons with color background sometimes. It just makes it stand out a little bit more. Great, well let's move on down. I'm not going to change any padding or anything like that. Let's give it a bit of box shadow just to lift it off the page a little bit there. Next we've got sizing. I'm not really going to mess with the sizing. You can take it down if you want to. For, for instance, we can make it a little smaller in width, which will make it deeper. And you can align it in the middle of your column there that it's in if you want to, or left, right, obviously. I'm going to leave mine just as it is. Again, usual practice. Is just delete it if you want to go back to the default, which works for me. Okay. Spacing. I'm not going to change that at all. Margin is going to push it down, up, left or right. Padding is going to add what they call padding from the outside to the contents here. Padding is just like it sounds really. If you imagine this is a box that you're shipping something to somebody, padding is where you put the bubble wrap around here to give it a little gap between the outside of the box and the inside. Okay, obviously 
can give it a border if you want to. I'm happy with mine not to have a border there. Usual things, border styles, you can do all four at once, top, right, bottom or left individually if you choose. The only other thing I think I want to do is perhaps give it a bit of box shadow on the bottom just to lift it off the page. There we go. And of course we want this to be fully automated. We want it to start rolling around our blog posts when the page loads. And to do that, in post slider settings, design tab, go all the way down to the bottom. Here you're going to find animation. I'm going to turn automatic animation to on. Now the default's 7 seconds or 7,000 milliseconds. I'm going to take mine up to say 5 seconds or 5,000 milliseconds. I'm going to leave the continue automatic slide on hover to off like that. That way if they hover over it, it's going to stop, they can read the writing and they can look at the image and get to the read more button if they want to. If you turn that off it's going to keep rotating every 5 seconds whether their mouse is on it or not. So I'm going to leave mine like that. So that's pretty much it. It's automating. We've got the styles that we want. We've got the background images that we want. Let's save our changes and take a look on the front end. Go down and save the page changes. Save draft or publish if you're ready. Let's exit the visual builder. And there we go. We've got our animated blog post there. It's just rolling around the post every five seconds and of course we can roll on it it's going to stop rolling while we've got our mouse on it here and you can go on and click the post and obviously get to the blog post itself so there you go guys that's how to create an automatic blog post slider with the Divi theme builder really nice feature to have on your site really easy to do and don't forget if you have any questions about Divi WordPress or anything Put them down below and I'll try and do a demonstration video for you. Once again, this has been Jamie from System22 and WebDesignerTechTips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.